MBS, you remember me from the Dominoes in Oklahoma. I can't, and when I say I can, I mean I absolutely cannot try to pass myself off as something that I am not. But I can try and meet you halfway in a number of different areas. If you'd like me to come to your country and to go to Neom, then I'm going to have to do certain things. One of these things that I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be doing a peace deal with Islam. And then I will do a conversion and I will attempt to appease the religious aspects uh, and prospects of my people, the young pioneers. That's Soviets, and we will cover that a little later in this presentation and personal message. But as I mentioned, I can't be something that I'm not. I also have to tell you what I am or what I can be perceived as if I go to a foreign land not of my birth and then try to learn a new way. I have to have some sort of intermediary. Since I can't learn the language at least not easily at first. What I can do is I can attempt to bridge where I stand with the majority of people and the religion. And my uh, attempts to do a conversion to Islam. So, Shaitan. MBS. Consider my Brothor and I Loki like Harut and Marut. So I am a Shaitan in Muslim society. What this would mean is, is that. I'm a twisted thing, which is true. And that way I would not be trying to pass myself off falsely. And I could live openly. But of course, to be a shaitan, since there is none in Saudi Arabia, I would have to have a declaration from the king. So if you have the time and you and the king decide to accept my people in exchange for the space doorway, if you could ask him to declare me a shaitan, now I am like Marut. Because to me, this sounds like Mars or Merlin, a title which I have with some of the northern kingdoms of the world. However, this doesn't translate to the kingdom of Saudi Arabia, and I understand this. So I say, Shaitan, in exchange of equal standings. So, uh, Haru would be like my bro Thor, who we have a link together and a childhood history from schooling and later on as young adults. And I wanted to go into a little bit of detail as to 
what this appears to be based on the information available to me. Based on the information available to me, under the Quranic narrative, they followed what the Shaitan devils gave out. Harut and Marut. And to your people, so they don't have freakouts, it can be explained as we are only a fitna, a trial. So don't disbelieve. And they learn that which harms them and profits them. And indeed they knew that the buyers of it, magic, would have no share in the afterlife, I believe is that is what that means. Now, what I'm saying is, and what this is saying is very true to what I'm experiencing as learning a new way. Learning which harms them and profits them. That is basically how we have grown up in a almost black and white, this or that kind of way, we learn the world. And it is a kind of a side effect of having Asperger's, being a serpent. So, what this means is that we are essentially, um, my brother and I, we are like learning the world as we are attempting to interact with it, as most people are, but it's just a little bit more difficult and figuring out how to translate back into the world what we learn and the way we do this is we develop a sort of a wisdom and with the mind transference technology that's been used on me I have gained the wisdom of about a, a thousand years and It has shaped the way I approach things that are more difficult to approach. But it also gives me a bit of courage, this wisdom. And how this can be used to help the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia is having a shaitan is to eliminate superstitions of foreigner ways as the kingdom opens up. I've been tracking the progress of Neom via the internet and its development and what jobs are being asked for for hiring and stuff, uh, and um, there is nothing in there to address superstition. And so this way I can actually be beneficial. And the way that I do things is through wizardry, and it's a techno wizardry. And the symbols are all technical. 
they have meanings. And these meanings, if the other end user of the manual, which has been passed down orally and through the mind, can understand what these movements mean and the manual essentially can be decoded on what behavior to do next. And this is essentially the foundations of my magic, which isn't, that is silly. Everything is codified and everything is very technical, especially with people who have Asperger's. And so therefore, things like religions have to pan out. They have to add up to something significant. And that is why a lot of the times you will see in religious manuscripts of all kinds numbers because they are being codified and evaluated and just as they are just as the symbols and I guess you'd say superstitious appearances that I have to the people in your country and throughout the Muslim world we in a way have a way to bridge our understandings without lashing out and to bring uh, us in the world closer together and so in this way there can be a bridge created if I'm called Shaitan Now as for a real problem, a real magical-like thing that is negative that people in the Muslim world should be concerned about, I'd like to bring to your attention what I perceive to be magic-like but very, very detrimental. Apophis, the Chaos Serpent, Parasite, is the enemy of the whole world. These orb things that people think are wonderful, they get into your dreams, they get into your mind. And they tell you wonderful and frivolous things. But this is false. It's meant to distract you from your enemies in the world. Those who would do you harm. The environment, as it changes and becomes more hostile, so you don't prepare to do anything about it. This is the new kind of enemy. And if the world does go the way of peace, the armies and the militaries will be angry that they have no purpose. But this is false. Apophis, these orb things, these little lights 
in the sky in, in the night sky that seem to show up at certain places. They are not good in any way. They work people's minds. And they can do more than just be orbs. They can blob together and take the shapes of actual people. I've experienced this more than once and they become threatening. And they project like wave-like things that make you feel very unsettled. Uh, and that's why I explained to you it's a parasite. So if you're trying to do something big to further civilization, you have to be wary of these things. Like, for example, a space program. You don't want these things knowing what it is you're doing. Specifically, if you're opening up a space doorway, you don't want these things going through your doorway and going to another location on the planet. Anyway, Apophis is the enemy of the future, not people. The symbol of the Soviets is very misunderstood. It's the symbol of saboteurs who are the children stealers of the past, mostly forgotten due to space weapons that erase your minds. But they are more powerful than ever nowadays. And so the hammer and the sickle, a hammer to bash you in the brains and then throw you in the river, and the sickle to castrate so that only a certain race can live in a certain area. This means saboteurs have been set upon us by old reigning monarchs who have taken a shadow rulership and don't put themselves out in the open. It's my opinion that this is why the monarchs and stuff of today have such heavy security. Because otherwise, no one would really pay any attention to them, just doing business deals. Something to consider. Because they have their focus up on the northern kingdoms. But that doesn't necessarily mean that they haven't tried things on other kingdoms throughout the world, which I think that they have. After all, the people that joined the Soviet Union all had to add this symbol because that's where the children were being destroyed. That is the basis for the nurseries. And so I wanted to talk briefly about this because I found some information when I was looking for the great sultan of the earth and I think that I found it in Saudi Arabia.
I think it was this guy. And according to the internet, he's deceased. Which is disappointing because I really wanted to meet the guy. But I have my own ideas of how good he was. And... It's disappointing to read this, but it is what it is, not what I'd like it to be. It says, the Sultan took a lifetime anti-communist, anti-Soviet view, based on his dislike of Soviet state atheism as well as Soviet interest in Gulf oil access ports. He felt it risked Saudi independence. In my opinion, this is false if this person is who I think this is. I think it was for other reasons, and they are much more higher-minded than something that can simply be uh, addressed by enhanced security or fancy paperwork finagling. And the reason I say that is for this other portion. right below regarding the 9-11 stuff. He says uh, regarding uh, Osama bin Laden in supposedly this newspaper, we in turn ask, are bin Laden and his supporters the only ones behind what happened, or is there another power with advanced technical expertise that acted with them? And it was never really even proven that Osama bin Laden ever really did anything. Everyone just generally accepted the hype and then went on the attack. So who's them? So I ended up getting put in charge of the Soviets but I was never really one my, myself. The Soviet Union ended, but I was conscripted, so perhaps if he had heard in the past about me, maybe this was an unsettling fact that had contributed to his distrust of Soviets. Things like this would make more sense. And then all the other things are great for headlines and for documents that pertain to political and or social leanings. Some things to consider, especially since this is the basis for who we are asking in exchange shelter or asylum in exchange for a space doorway. If you eliminate religious aspects then it allows people to develop, once they're safe and secure, their own ideas of what they value and what they want to value. My people ended up wanting to value their Christian faith, their faith in Jesus in particular. So, since Islam isn't opposed to Jesus, this isn't really much of a conflict of leadership for me. 
converting to Islam. Because their children that just need to be unified for safety. And that's how it ended, the Soviet Union. These are the facts that I have gathered up from my life and what I decided to call them. And anybody else doesn't really need to have an opinion even if they grew up within the Soviet Union and to frame up their lives and stuff like that. Anyway, uh, I just wanted to uh, uh, see that um, you had a little bit of an understanding of me trying to be more honest about who I am and uh, the Soviet stuff uh, so that no one's concerned. The problem with the Soviet stuff, in my opinion, is there is a lifelong dedication to the commander. And I've had trouble leading. So I'm doing the best I can by trying to find a place that where all people are claimed to be welcome. And that place is Nail. Finally, in order to explain myself better and be more transparent so that you can understand me, I wanted to uh, talk about some of my hats because if it's strange, I don't want people to be afraid. So, first, this is what I call my Peter hat. In the Soviet Union, there was, and with the young pioneers, uh, a concept called Peter, who was a different boy than all the others, and like a leader. And what I did with my hat as I attempted to lead people on a hunt to find people who were harming me and uh, or my orphans and my myself, essentially my people, um, I put a wing disc with a flying man with the rings as I was associated with a great sultan who did this and this was known to my people and the people of Cobra so this is essentially a Peter hat and it's like a leadership hat symbolic of uh, catching a wolf or like a bad person in the act of doing something wrong. Uh, and that's the general meaning for for this one. But like I said, mine, I customized it to myself. Now, the other hat that I wear is called a Phrygian cap. And in my case, I was granted and acknowledged by a royalty that my humanity had been violated. And that is how I came to wear this hat. And then the color of my hat, or trim, or was red. And the reason why is because my sensei, 
or he took me, he basically took me in and taught me. And so that is why my hat is red. I became the Merlin, and that is essentially what it is associated with. Now, this goes back a very long ways, and see, it's on the seal of the United States Senate with liberty on it, opposed to the fascists, who are the tyrants. Which, basically, if you think about it, this explains why I'm looking to take my people out of the United States and take them to a place where I think they will be more free, which is in Neo. Here on the internet, you can see a little bit about the Phrygian cap and uh, some of the commonly known origins of it. In my case, I am a gnome, and that's why I wear it. But this is known because I was attacked, specifically because I was. and. It, I was attacked by the United States government. And I hadn't done anything wrong to warrant such attacks. So, but most of my people, they aren't gnomes. Some of them may have intermingled with families descended from more ancient groups of people. Um, and so they might have the right to wear one of these. Uh, in that sense, but that doesn't necessarily mean uh, uh, that all my people are. There, there's probably very few that are. Though there are, there is a great number of my people spread throughout. Uh, I just wanted to be more transparent about uh, uh, who I am. And by the way, the uh, I've referenced myself as a weird Jew. I'm not Jewish. It's just, it's that we wear a hat, kind of like, but only sometimes, kind of like Jewish people do. And I only wear it when I'm trying to tell the truth. Uh, and if I think it's necessary to, like, convey, hey, I'm being totally forthright and honest and uh, out of respect for the gnomes, I will always tell the truth when uh, I'm wearing the hat. And I'll always help another gnome when I'm wearing the hat. Um, uh, and the reason why is because I know that at some point either they or uh, their families has have had their humanity violated. Uh, and so, uh, you know, usually their minds are broken or something like that. Um, and while other people might just call them crazy, I have more respect for them. Uh, and so uh, that's what, what this basically means. Um, uh, and so, basically anybody who would be a gnome, you'd want to treat them nicely because their humanity has already been violated. So, doing anything bad to them would be a really horrible and tyrannical thing to do. And that's what tyrants do, is they hunt gnomes and then they destroy them. So, if the government, which in the United States is 
attacking me uh, when I've only tried to lead my people in a positive, healing manner, then that's really, really horrible and tyrannical. So, anyway, I just wanted to give you kind of a, a, a little bit of background um, uh, as to, you know, what you're, uh, what you're dealing with. However, I am a little bit different than the rest of the gnomes, as I am evil. I know better, and by knowing better, I have a wisdom, and that helps me lead, just like my sensei, who's also evil. And by evil, I simply mean, I know better. I am wise. And I have, I have become wise from experience directly. 